All right, today I have a 30-year-old water-cooled walk-in cooler that is down. So we can see the boxes at room temperature. So this is a site that's down because of COVID. So this thing might have been down for two, three weeks now. So fan one is working. Fan two is seized. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if we're iced up or anything. No, we're, we're not iced up. We're filthy, but we're not iced up. Let's do all our checks before we climb up on top of the box. So here's our thermostat. If you follow the conduit, our liquid line solenoid is not connected in the coil. That's usually the setup we're used to seeing. So let's climb up on top of this box and go see what's going on. All right, it's pretty tight uh, crawl space here. Um, the, uh, the entrance is really tight. But it's all good. We'll climb up there and go take a look. Alright, so here's our unit here. It is water cooled as you can see. Looks like this condensing unit may have been upgraded at some point. So let's take off our electrical covers and let's see what's going on with this guy. So here's all our start components, our relay, capacitor. All right, and right here is our conduit that's coming up. It's coming up to this box, this junction box. So as you can see, it does not collect, connect to a liquid line solenoid. So let's go ahead and take an amp draw on this compressor. And we're drawing 31 amps, and then we're going off on overload. All right, so before we condemn this compressor, uh, I want to make sure we have correct power in coming into this relay. So I'm just going to go test off of pins 1 and pins two right here and let's see what we get all right so let's go check power at pins ones and two so we're getting 209 volts uh, let me just move the camera quickly let's get a better view of that so we're getting 208.9 so we're getting good voltage here all right so we have 208 so that's telling me my circuit from my one side is good, and then my circuit from my second side is good. So we have correct voltage here to our relay. All right, so we have the schematic for the compressor here. And then I got a little schematic from the back of the packaging for this Super Boost. Uh, the one I am using is the SPP8E. Sorry I couldn't get a better schematic here, but let's try to zoom in. A little bit better that's a little bit better so here's how I'm gonna wire it in so I have the two leads coming off of my super boost so I'm just gonna run one of the leads to our start cap here and the second lead to the other side of the start cap and I use those little piggyback jumpers they're good to have so that you don't have to cut the original connectors everything clips in together um let's wire it up and see what happens all right so we have our super booster installed here i am not very optimistic this thing's probably been short cycling for two three weeks going off on overload so turning on drawing 31 amps shutting off but let's see what happens we'll fire up maybe we get lucky here and listen to that beautiful sound i am actually shocked that this thing's running wow that is great news well, let's finish our visual checks here so our sight glass is full it is not flashing compressor is still humming nicely it looks like we may have gotten lucky here so usually when a compressor starts short cycling like that going off on overload we usually blow the compressor if it's been doing it for days weeks however long this is going going off for like i mentioned earlier this box has not been monitored probably in a couple weeks but she's drawing good amperage. Six amps, sight glass is still full. This is really good news for the customer. All right, so let's head down and address this fan here, the left-hand evaporator fan that we noticed when we first walked in and did our visual checks. So we'll pull this cover off. 
and we'll hit fast forward here and let's just see if we can at least kick start this evaporator fan just to see if the box pulls down the temperature and then I can create an estimate from there let's see how badly she seized up maybe we're not getting power we're definitely getting power because she seized up you can feel it and it felt like it was gonna go there but yeah this thing just doesn't want to go Oh, well, almost got that time, but all right, we're going to give up here. So I'm going to just temporarily install a motor here. So whenever you're installing these brackets, just make sure you line up the wiring at the same spot. I've done that before where I put the wiring, instead of it being at 12 o'clock, I'll put it at like 9 o'clock and the wire doesn't reach. So just take notice of where that wiring harness goes. And we'll hit fast forward one more time here, not to bore everybody. And we'll get our motor in there. And there's actually a tie wrap that it, you can actually put in at the top there. I'm not going to put the tie wrap because I'm only putting this to test it. I will be generating an estimate for this job site. Uh, they don't really care if this thing's running or not. They're probably going to want it fixed. But for now, we just want to make sure we cover all of our bases here. And just make sure the unit is getting temp. So throw in our fan blade. And let's get ready to throw some power back into this EVAP coil and see what happens. So I'm just over at the breaker now. And yeah, the breaker's probably like a, well that's probably like a 30 second walk, so. So there we go, fan is running. That's good news. All right, box temp is coming down nicely. We'll check back in in about 10 minutes. One degree per minute is kind of my target for this right now. And we're at 40. We cycled off. Uh, we need a thermostat adjustment, but we're all good here. All right, so there's another one of my customers that down due to COVID. So basically that overload has been tripping probably every two to three minutes for the last like week to week and a half. I was not expecting this compressor to run. I hooked up that super boost just to see what would happen and I was in shock when this thing ran. So that just shows you the power of these super boosts. Uh, they can be awesome for things like this, for troubleshooting. Okay, so we're gonna be sending a quote to the customer at this point. It is my preference not to leave these super boosts on. Now I've left these smaller hard starts on compressors before, so let's say the quarter or one third horsepower compressors, just the little reach-ins, but I've wired them in series with a overload. Uh, it's my preference to put the start components, the OEM start components back in. Now, sometimes some smaller customers don't want to pay for you to go back and do that. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna definitely put a quote in to change all the start components. I want everything to be OEM. Uh, some guys do, some guys don't. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I prefer to follow the manufacturer guidelines because my concern is this compressor is under warranty for a year, any compressor we change. Now I don't want another company to go in there and we've put in a hard start kit or a super boost and then they say, oh, these guys left this in and then it goes back to Tecumseh or Copeland. So that's why it's my preference not to leave them in. I like to just put the original start components back in. Now there have been times when I put the original start components back in and the thing wouldn't fire. So then I would leave the hard start in there and let the customer know, hey, the compressor's on its way out. You might get one or two or three months out of it. And they'll, and they'll, they'll tell me, hey, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just leave it in the system.